see uh, Dr. Phil on Joe Rogan? I did. Did you see what he said? He I said did. He said can you play this clip? Please. I, uh, if you don't have it, I can find it for you. It's a two-minute clip. I put it on the Moms for Liberty uh, Twitter feed, and I quoted him. Yeah, this is fantastic, Rob, later. if you can find it. It's two minutes and something. Two minutes and uh, just go to Moms for Liberty account, and you should see it. Go up. Uh, a little bit more. Maybe go to videos. That right there, that's the one. Yep. America's not far behind that because no. I've, I've talked to a lot of teachers and they're telling me that they have a duty to the children that if the child is not ready to talk to their parents about this, <laughs> that it's okay for them to keep a secret from the child. Now, let me tell you what my problems with this are and see what you think. Um, first off, if this is either a psychological phenomenon or a medical phenomenon, and the teachers are not trained in either psychology or medicine, mm -hmm. they're not any more trained to deal with that than they are to take out the kid's spleen in the homeroom. So if that's true, if it's a psychological thing, if it's, if it's gender dysphoria, or it's a, it's a medical uh, issue, then you need someone trained in child psychology, psychiatry, or medicine. And the teacher's not trained in any of those three things. Like I say, they're not any more trained in that than they are to take out the child's spleen. So how are they qualified to deal with that? Secondly, it's teaching the child to keep a secret right. from their parents. It's teaching deception and interfering between the child's yeah, relationship with their parent. With now, their issue, with their, their justification for that is, well, if the child goes home and announces this, or if we tell it to the parent, then... The child could get abused. The child could get judged. The child could get kicked to the curb. Uh, but they have to admit, statistically, that that is very rare. And if that's the case, that's what we have child uh, Department of Child and Family Services for. That's what we have Child Protective Services for. If that's the case, then you call in for some intervention if the child is being abused at home for whatever reason. Uh, then you so, get so now WISC is able to put CD through CDC on schools and they want to go at 25,000 by 2025? Oh, yeah, and they're just getting started. <laughs> okay, so you're not inspiring me. I'm I mean, sorry. No, no, what I'm saying to you is, <laughs> and, and the, the, from the place I'm going to is the following. So if, if these guys are being funded by the government, yep. okay, what can a, a liberal uh, and a left uh, president is going to support this? Because historically, that's what's going to happen. What can really a conservative president do against this? A fight back again. Get the CDC out of our public schools across the country. But they're going to come back under a liberal president. So you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you do it within four years. Great. Then what? I'm interested in long term. So when, when, when I'm doing financial planning with a client, I did this for 20 years. We sit down, we look at three buckets. Short term, it's zero to 12 months. Events that are going to happen, zero to 12 months. Bills, expenses, da da da. Okay, great, school. So you need, you know, six to 12 months of your expenses set aside. Then you have midterm, one year to 10 years. Okay, what can we do midterm? Well, my daughter's 26. She's probably going to be, you know, getting married. So we have to pay for it because in all culture, we got to, so we know, okay, my son's going through college with $200,000. So that's midterm, one to 10 years. Then long term is 10 to 40 years. What's going to happen in 10 or 40 years? Retirement, blah, 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 da, da, da. Parents may pass away. We have to be ready for this. So each is a different way of thinking. Short term, I get it. My interest purely is long term. I'm not interested short term. My interest is long term because my kids are young and one day they're going to have to do this with their kids. A, even a Republican president in the office for four to eight years, maybe they can fight against it a little bit. Maybe they can prevent a li little bit. But this model is coming here to sit near you, no? Um, yes, they are. Yes, absolutely, 100%. They, they want to bring community partners into all of the schools. Like, think about Planned Parenthood. It's like having Planned Parenthood at every single school across the United States. Okay, so now what would happen if, by the way, that's scary. I don't want to go through what you just said right there. So imagine uh, uh, visually, let's just kind of put this in place. Okay, uh, I need a morning after pill. I went through this and I don't want to tell my parents. No problem. Go on school right there. Go to see Dr. Jones. Oh, it's okay, honey. We all make mistakes. Here's use this and da-da-da-da. 
that's it on campus. 100%. So Planned Parenthood on campus, and they'll spin it as something else, but that's what's available to them. You want to get an abortion, you don't want your parents to know, don't worry, we're all gone through this, you're doing the right thing. Here you go. You don't need to tell your parents, we'll take care of it, come through here. Taxpayers are paying for it, we don't even know about it. That's kind of what you're saying, Planned Parenthood within the schools that they're putting together. Correct. Fantastic. So if that's what they're doing, and that's where they're going to go, and I'm asking the question from you on what hurts them. You said parents, you said uh, being on boards, which out of the 13,000, 12,000, they control anyway. So they control over 90%. We're working on that. I know you are, but you got 12,000 <laughs> 12, out of 13,000. Yes. And then the last one was, um, uh, 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 you know, what was the last one you said? So one was uh, um, parents, you know, a board, and then there was one other one. But the, the direction where I'm going with this is if we know this is going to be happening, what do they fear even more? Do they fear homeschooling? Do they fear kids stepping out? Do they fear any of that stuff? What would happen if all of a sudden there is a mass exodus? So for the longest time, I've been, Rob, how long have I been talking about? Let's shut down the border for two years. How long have I been saying this? Oh, since the border crisis started. So what would you say? You think I've been saying this for about a year? Yeah. Okay. So I've been saying that for about a year, right? Now I'm hearing some other people saying, let's shut it down for two years, three years, five years. I think we shut down the border for 20, two years, not 22 years, two years. And let's see what happens. We're going to the border ourselves. We're putting a whole crew together. We're going to go yeah. in the next couple of weeks and do a podcast from the border is what we're going to be doing. So, but what if parents go on a one-year strike? What if half of America goes on a one-year strike and they say, guess what, public schools? What? We're not going. What do you mean you're not going? We're just not going. And what if, if you really want to do something about this, Tiffany, at the highest level, what if the 120,000 members that you have, that's a lot, what if we put a curriculum together to train all of them and bring a level of confidence in homeschooling and choose out of these 1,200, 12, 120,000 members that we have, that you have, Moms for Liberty, and give them the confidence to say, guys, we can do this together for one year. Let's let them feel the pain. What if that number now is... 12 million kids, okay, that we can have not go to public schools anymore. Let's take one year off. Will the cities, the states, the, the country feel the pain if 12 million kids are not going to public schools for one year? First of all, they are flooding the country with new students. So uh, for the students that are leaving, there are new students that are coming in and now are becoming a part of the schools. Um, and often these kids can't uh, read or write in English. And so just to be clear now, if you're a math teacher, you're now teaching English as well. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.